Legends of small and creepy humanoid creatures are present in cultures all around the world. While it might be easy to dismiss most as myths, the existence of video footage of some of these supposed beings might give us pause to wonder what's truly possible. Surely there is a rational explanation. Gnome of Hirona. In 1989, this mysterious creature known as the Gnome of Hirona was discovered in Spain, described as being hairless, bluish in color, and measuring approximately 4.7 inches or 12 centimeters in height. The gnome had pointed, elf-like ears, a curious protrusion from the top of its head, and bright reddish eyes. The first reported claims of its findings stated that it had been encountered by campers on the path from Banyolas to Olat, approximately 11 kilometers away from Hirona. Allegedly, they saw it in the woods and chased after it. Reports claimed that it squealed in a manner that made one recall the laughter of an old man. The creature supposedly survived around 24 hours after capture. Once it had passed, it was turned over to parapsychologist Anhel Gordon. He placed the specimen in a jar with formaldehyde. He took pictures and alerted the media. Among those informed were American pathologist John Altschuler and Spanish doctor Luis Linares de Mula, the latter of whom stated, translated from Spanish, quote, On one hand, the fact that this is a monstrous being, meaning a tetralogic case, a deformed animal, on which tissue, organs, extremities, etc., have developed abnormally. It could be due to the discovery of a primitive being that was preserved in a sufficiently cold zone, such as snow or a glacier, so that its tissue, flesh, entrails, and bones survived. In that case, this would be an animal unknown to modern science. Experts rushed to attempt to decipher the origin of the cryptid. Researcher Pedro Paolo and biologist from the Barcelona Zoo stated that the creature could be a three-month-old sheep fetus if its discovery was a hoax. Mysteriously, the alleged campers that found the gnome, Mario Añanos and Juan Pujals, were never heard from again. The Pukwudgie The Pukwudgie is a three-foot, one-meter-tall humanoid race from Native American Lenape and Wampanoag folklore. They have broad noses, fingers, and ears. Their name translates from the Massachusetts language to small wild man of the woods who vanishes. Their skin is said to glow, and they can disappear at will. Initially friendly to humans, the Pukwudgie became violent after being dispersed by the Wampanoag. Lights believed to be the souls of those taken by the Pukwudgie can supposedly be seen in photos taken in Freetown State Forest. They are said to use sand to blind their victims, and several unexplained disappearances from the Massachusetts Park's 100-foot, 30-meter cliff have been attributed to them. The creatures have been used by British Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling for her American wizarding lore. She's received criticism from indigenous groups and activists for alleged cultural appropriation, with some believing that public knowledge of their existence will only serve to anger the creatures and pose a direct threat to Native Americans in the region. Salta Duende In 2008, a terrifying duende, captured here on film, reportedly harassed locals in a small Argentinian town, running sideways on two legs, barking like a dog, and throwing rocks at passers-by. The small creature was said to stalk its victims at night while hiding in the tall grass before emerging to attack. The footage caused a panic in Argentina, with more witnesses seeing a similar little human-like creature wearing a pointy hat. Jose Alvarez, the teenager recording the video, told local news translated from Spanish that, quote, It was one in the morning, and I was recording on my phone while they joked. Suddenly I felt as if someone was throwing rocks. I turned to my side and observed the bushes moving. I thought it was a dog, but then I saw that figure in the shape of a gnome and got really scared. I recorded a bit, and then we all left running. On the one hand, some self-proclaimed freelance specialists in film media stated that the video had been altered, possibly with the use of a basic program like paint. Suspicion was raised mainly due to perceived similarities between decorative garden gnomes and the Salta Duende. Others, including many in the town, claim that the creature is real. Some believe the being may be of an extraterrestrial origin, and although violent, its intentions are unknown. The Ebu Gogo the Ebu Gogo are a mythological race of three-foot, one-meter-tall, human-like creatures living in the dense jungles of Indonesia. In the native language of the Nagai people, Ebu Gogo translates to Grandmother Glutton. They are said to have giant mouths and hairy bodies, and are reportedly obsessed with human food. They could reportedly speak their own language and repeat the sounds they heard from the villagers. The Nagai believed that the creatures were most common when Portuguese trading ships arrived in the 17th century, leading to stories of them being driven to near extinction by disease and conflict. Nagai legends say most Ebu Gogo were burned alive in their caves by villagers after they began kidnapping children. Early scientists believed that the Ebu Gogo myths may be explained by the presence of monkeys in the area. 
Still, the discovery of hobbit-like fossils in the region raised the possibility that such creatures may have coexisted with man. The bones of a small hominid were recently discovered in the Indonesian island of Flores. The creature is believed to have been alive 13,000 years ago, despite some studies suggesting an older date, which has led some to believe that the remains are of an Ebugogo ancestor. Some anthropologists have indicated that the discovery may point to the possibility that the reports of the Ebugogo come from cultural memories of the people that used to populate the area. The mystery of recent sightings only deepened when dirt rack bikers in Indonesia recorded a video of a small human-like animal scurrying out of the underbrush in front of them in 2017. Gremlins In the 1920s, a British magazine allegedly reported that the RAF detected, quote, a horde of mysterious and malicious sprites. In 1923, a British airman supposedly claimed to see tiny creatures sabotaging his plane in flight. The bat-like beings known as gremlins have since been blamed for several plane crashes. They're said to tinker with planes to bring them down. For a time, the British suspected the gremlins were sympathetic to enemy causes during World War II. The revelation of equally inexplicable accidents among opposing aircraft led many pilots to believe that the gremlins were equal opportunity, destructive creatures. Their name has been theorized to come from the Old English germian, which translates to the verb vexing. An alternative theory holds that aviators baptized the creatures with a combination of the last name Grimm from the fairy tale writers and the then popular Fremlin beer. Reports of gremlins typically describe the creatures clinging to the fuselages outside while ripping away at parts. One member of the air service claimed he saw one of the creatures before his engine malfunctioned. It allegedly caused the B-25 Mitchell he was piloting to quickly lose altitude, forcing him to land. Some reports even claim that the creatures either spoke English or were capable of repeating words they had heard. Some critics have rebuked eyewitnesses by arguing that stress and changes in altitude could induce hallucinations in pilots, especially when they had to explain the inexplicable. Yet multiple accounts of gremlin interference with planes exist. Even famed aviator Charles Lindbergh himself recalled encountering the small, grim and menacing figures while flying. Several World War II aviators also linked the creatures to the notorious appearance of Foo Fighters or unexplained lights. Such an explanation may point to an alien origin. Prior Dwarves These creatures have been identified by the Native American Crow Nation as a race of strong dwarves that count on spiritual wisdom and physical prowess. They are also referred to as Nurumbi or Awakule. Crow history tells us that tribal chief Plenty Coup was guided to chiefdom and to serve as liaison between U.S. senators and the Crow people by one of these dwarves who materialized in his dreams. Thanks to the dwarf, he was able to preserve 80% of the original Crow land. Most Native American tribes tell of orally recorded witnesses to the existence of these little people. Written colonialist mentions of the prior dwarves date back to the Lewis and Clark expedition. Meriwether Lewis described the creatures in his journal as devils with large heads and a height of about 18 inches or 48 centimeters, who were wary of visitors entering their territory. The Sioux people claimed that they killed any man approaching the mountain of the little people, known today as Spirit Mound. The Crow Nation attributes petroglyphs in the prior mountains to these creatures and considers them sacred. All Native American accounts coincide in claiming that the dwarves are or were a warring population, eager to fend off invaders and capable of arming themselves with rudimentary weapons. They were also known to engage in mischievous behavior, such as kidnapping children and stealing food, tobacco, and medicine. There have been reports of dwarf remains found in the mountain caves of Colorado, Montana, and Wyoming. Still, these have suspiciously disappeared from official records after being sent for analysis and verification to research institutions such as the Smithsonian. Some have tried to link unexplained 2019 security camera footage from Colorado to the creatures. 